Well, good morning to worship, everyone. Glad that you are able to be with us today. And I'd uh, like to thank Joe Siebert for sharing a sermon this morning. And uh, to all the other musicians and readers who are going to be assisting in worship today. Uh, Pastor Berg and Susan are in Ashland, Oregon, visiting their daughter, Hannah. And uh, they'll be back tomorrow, so we wish them a wonderful time, as well as safe travels back to Seattle. Um, if you have not yet downloaded the worship bulletin, you can do so at flcbothel.org. Uh, please remember to keep yourself muted unless you uh, have a turn to help lead worship. And uh, you can use your jazz hands if there's something that you would like to uh, say thanks or wow, that was great. We are going to uh, begin our worship. God, teach me your ways and I will follow them closely. Help me to understand your will, that I may cherish your law. Guide me along your path, a way of delight. Open my heart to your laws and not to riches. Turn my eyes from the lure of evil and let me live your truth. Keep your promise to one who reveres you. Spare me the shame I fear. How good your commands. See, I want what is right. Let your justice give me life. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, ELW 858. German hymn writer Joachim Neander in the 17th century wrote the text for this hymn of joy and praise. It's based on Psalms 103 and 150. 
He set his text to a tune that was well known in his own day. Neander wrote at least 60 hymns, which were also hymns of joy and praise, in a time which, in which hymn singing had become rather tedious. Praise to the Lord was written in his 30th year when he was dying of tuberculosis. It was Catherine Winkworth who introduced the hymn to the English-speaking world almost three centuries later in the late 19th century. This is one of the most well-known hymns in Christian books of worship. As we sing, we join with voices in many languages of millions who have gone before us and those across the globe to sing these words of thanksgiving and honor to the God who created us, protects us, and befriends us. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Praise and Thanksgiving, ELW 689. The text for this hymn comes from hymn writer Albert Bailey, who lived in the first half of the 20th century. He also wrote the text for another familiar hymn in the ELW, Lord, Whose Love and Humble Service. The message of this hymn stresses that sharing life's blessings is a part of giving thanks and praise for them. You may be familiar with the Highland tune for this hymn, Bunasan, named after a village in eastern Scotland, or excuse me, western Scotland. Bunasan is also the tune for Morning is Broken. Fruit. 
Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone else indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. Word of God, word of life. And now we visit the Desley home and Paul and Darcy will share the fourth and fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Give us today our daily bread. What does this mean? In fact, God gives daily bread without our prayer, even to all evil people. But we ask in this prayer that God cause us to recognize what our daily bread is and to receive it with thanksgiving. What then does daily bread mean? Everything included in the necessities and nourishment for our bodies, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, farm, fields, livestock, money, property, an upright spouse, upright children, upright members of the household, upright and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, decency, honor, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. What is the fifth petition? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What does this mean? We ask in this prayer that our Heavenly Father would not regard our sins nor deny these petitions on their account. For we are worthy of nothing for which we ask, nor have we earned it. Instead, we ask that God would give us all things by grace, for we daily sin much and indeed deserve only punishment. So, on the other hand, we too truly want to forgive heartily and to do good gladly to those who sin against us.
The children are invited to come to the front of their monitors. We're going to have the children's message now. And uh, we'd like to kind of review a little bit. We've, this is the third week that uh, we're talking about prayer, especially the Lord's Prayer. And uh, first Sunday of our prayer theme um, talked about ways to make the prayer, how to structure it, what to include in the prayer, uh, Jesus taught. And uh, wow, W and the word with reminds us of wow. Uh, all the amazing things that God has created, the beautiful sunsets in this beautiful part of the world that we live in. And the I is a reminder of, uh, I'm so sorry, God, for what I did, uh, to pray for forgiveness. And then um, we have the T, where we're reminded to give thanks to God for all the things he has given us, our home to live in, clothes to wear, food to eat, friends and family. So we give thanks. And then finally, the H in the word with is help. God, help me with my short temper. God, help me with that irritating person I have to work with or member of the family who it's hard to get along with. So that's uh, how we build our prayer. And then we're reminded that uh, any time of the day is a good time to pray. And last Sunday, we prayed around the clock, all the different places that we can pray, whether we're at school or work or sitting in the car or standing in line. So today, I want to share a little bit about how does God hear our prayers? And... Um, my favorite vegetable is corn. Who else likes corn? Anyone? Yeah, a few hands go up, I see. Well, we get canned corn, frozen corn. Corn can be used for popcorn and corn flakes, frosted corn flakes, I think are better. But, uh, we have ears of corn, right? And um, if we all said our name, when I count to three, if we say our name at the same time, it would be this garbled, mumbled sound that nobody could really understand. But if we pray to God, and we're each praying to God, how could God hear each of us? Well, that's the beauty of it. God hears our prayers, and God hears everyone's prayers. How is that even possible? I don't know, because God is God. But we're asked to pray for all the things that are heavy on our heart. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for God to strengthen those who are afraid, maybe it's us, to comfort those who have lost a loved one, to protect the animals in our world, to protect the earth, to give thanks for our neighbors and our neighborhood, to thank God for food, to thank God for our homes, to thank God for our friends, to thank God for our families, to ask God for forgiveness, asking God to help our teachers, asking God to guide the people who run our country, those in our government, to protect those who serve our country, our military personnel, to guide and protect our police, to guide and protect our firefighters, to guide the people who take care of me and you, to keep us safe, to keep us healthy, to make each of us the little light of God that shines in the world, to help each of us forgive others, to help us to share, to help us make good choices, to help us be more patient, to help us persist when we want to give up, to make each of us more gentle and kinder, 
to make us be close to one another. Help us to be kind and to help those who have needs in our world to give them what they need. So boys and girls, moms and dads, members and friends of the church, we are blessed in so many ways. But what a blessing it is to know that God hears our prayers. He hears each of our prayers. And we can pray for anything, all the things that God has blessed us with. So let's close with a prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for hearing our prayers. We know that our prayers don't need to be perfect because you know already what our needs are before we say them. Be with each of us that we may share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Joe Siebert, who is going to share our sermon today. So here comes Joe. Good morning. I'd like to begin by thanking Roger for all of his hard work with us during the year, and especially his efforts this morning in worship. Thank you, Roger, so much for all of your ministry with us. Grace and peace to you, my good friends. Grace and peace. So much we long for these words, we need these words, we need them in our daily lives. I think maybe we need these words, especially during this difficult pandemic. Grace and peace to you. The pastor asked me to speak this morning to the fourth and fifth petitions of the Lord's Prayer. We had uh, the readings from Luther earlier on, didn't we? Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We're speaking this morning about bread and sin. Now it happens that I have experience and I have expertise in both areas. I suspect that Pastor knew that when he extended his invitation to me. Two weeks ago, Gordy began our conversation of the Lord's Prayer and he said we should think of this prayer as an outline. An outline for a prayer in which we come into the holy and heavenly presence of God. What a wonderful way to think of prayer, the holy and heavenly presence of God. Last week, Chris brought our everyday lives into this prayer. She spoke to our fears, our small fears, our big fears, fears that might have some legitimacy and maybe some that uh, are not quite so legitimate. But she said we lift up our fears to the Lord in prayer and particularly during the Lord's Prayer. So when I first started thinking about uh, this prayer, I thought of the disciples, these 12 people, very, very ordinary people, and they're coming to Jesus and they're saying, how do we pray? This is a very universal question, isn't it? Hordes of magazine articles and books have been written about prayer. So the Lord's Prayer comes to us courtesy of some very ordinary people asking an ordinary and common, if very profound question, how do we pray? And Jesus answers, I will not only teach you how to pray, I will teach you how to live. Let's see how Jesus does that. The fourth petition, give us this day our daily bread. Well, what did Jesus mean by that? I mean, was he speaking in literal terms? Was he speaking figuratively? Maybe both. Huh? We know that bread is a common need, and to the people of Israel, bread would have been very important. They lived in an agricultural society. They were concerned about the crops. The Old Testament is replete with stories about drought, about famine. So bread is very important. Well, to bring this uh, idea up to date, let's turn to a man named Jim Wallace, a pastor, a writer, an editor. He's been writing about the Lord's Prayer during pandemic times. And he said, bread is very important. We need to be concerned as Christians about those who are hungry. We need to ensure that everyone has enough food, and whether we're speaking of individuals or communities or whether we're talking system-wide, we need to be concerned about hunger. But we know that Jesus also spoke in metaphor. In the Gospel of John, he said, I am the bread of life. So this petition, I think, speaks to more than just bread. Turn to Luther in his small catechism, as we've seen today. By bread, Luther says Jesus meant everything that our bodies need. 
he gives us a long list. Food, drink, clothing, housing, upright rulers, peace, decency. And all Luther has a list of 22 items, which he ends with, and the like. I like ending lists with, and the like. I think it might be a good way to end our daily prayers. Huh? We could just say, and the like, God. Amen. That worked just fine. So in the fourth petition, we ask God to care for us. And we know that in asking God for God's care, we know that God will deliver that care. So really, trust is a large component of the Lord's Prayer. We could go on and on about bread and about our daily needs, and for sure we need to do this in our meditations. But this morning, that fifth petition looms over us rather heavily. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. This wording is kind of uh, rough to me, I think. It's blunt. I mean, sin. Yikes. I would really rather turn to another translation. I like forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I think maybe those uh, terms are a little more convenient than this idea of sin. Well, denominations have their different favorite wordings, and I'm sure that we have our favorite wordings as well. But I think uh, we want to do, as Gordy said, see this prayer as an outline, not get too hung up over specific words such that we miss the general point. I remember some childhood trips in the summertime. We would go to churches in other towns. We would be visiting family, uh, maybe friends elsewhere. Before the service started, my mother would be sure to check out. Now, do you people say debts or do you say trespasses? She'd then give me a little nudge and she would say, Joe, tell your sister that these people say trespasses not debts. Now, in those days, the Lord's Prayer was not typed out in the church bulletin. You had to have it memorized. So you had to be on your toes. You had to get this thing just right. You wouldn't want to accidentally say trespasses when you needed to say debts. Uh, I'm guessing that pastors get taken to task, too. I'll bet you fairly often over the version of the Lord's Prayer that they choose. So we could debate the definition of debts or trespasses, and the scholars have done this through the years, uh, produced some very interesting articles. Suffice it to say that by debts, we are talking about more than owing money, and by trespasses, we're talking about more than walking on someone else's land. Of course, we're in debt for many, many things. I mean, I owe my parents and my teachers a great deal. Well, we can turn to Jim Wallace again. And Jim Wallace says, during this pandemic time, during this time of severe economic downturn, people have concerns about paying the rent, about utilities, about mortgage, maybe about making a car payment, surely about student loans. So debt is very real. It's something that as Christians, we need to be concerned about in this society. And of course, we trespass, right? I uh, sometimes forget to uh, respect the boundaries that family has or friends have. But sin, sin, that is just so in your face. Let's turn to Martin Luther again. Martin Luther says, We ask God not to hold our sins against us, though we are worthy of nothing, nor have we earned God's love. Imagine Martin Luther, can't you, laying in that cold chapel in that little country town thinking about his own sins and saying, I don't know how God can ever love me. But Luther says, we ask that God would give us all things by grace, for we sin daily. And Luther goes on, if God forgives us, then it is our duty to forgive others heartily and gladly. What? I mean, forgive someone heartily and gladly? I mean, do we ever do that? You've done me wrong, and so I need to forgive you willingly, heartily, gladly. I mean, that's asking a lot. So really, in these two petitions, what are we talking about? Well, I think we're talking about all of life. I think these two petitions cover everything of life, don't you? I mean, the Lord's Prayer is very much alive. For it to survive all of these centuries, it had to have immediate relevance to lives lives everywhere, our own lives, the lives of our grandparents, our great-grandparents. We pray for bread, for all of our daily needs. We raise up sin, the ways in which we live, and the ways in which we stumble. And we ask for forgiveness, 
the ways in which we make amends for our shortcomings and ask others to do that for us. Well, these disciples were very ordinary people. They asked for guidance in prayer, and Jesus gave them an answer that has lasted and lasted. In these two petitions, we ask God for help in our daily lives, and we know that God will answer. Well, how will God answer? God will answer with abundance and with love. This is God's grace at work. We are showered with blessings for things that we have not earned and do not deserve. But this is how God acts. And through his prayer, Jesus reminds us that if we've received abundance and love, then we are called to share it. This, I think, is the message of these two petitions. The message is simple and profound and ever so challenging. But mostly, the Lord's Prayer shows us a magnificent way to live. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much for those beautiful words and encouragement. Uh, now we continue with the hymn of the day, hymn number 605. Forgive Our Sins, ELW 605. Rosamund Herklotz is the hymn writer who wrote the text for many hymns. This hymn is a reflection on the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer about forgiveness. The idea of the hymn had occurred to Miss Herklotz as she was digging out weeds in her nephew's garden. She thought of it as a metaphor. She began to think that as the weeds' deep roots obstruct the growth of the flowers near them, in like manner, the bitterness and resentment in our lives can become entrenched and hinder our growth in faith. In verse 2, she writes of the blessings we miss when, heart, when our heart broods on wrongs and will not old, let old bitterness depart. In verse 3, she speaks of the trifling debts others owe to us compared to the debt we owe to our Lord. Forgive our sins. And now we join the Liechtenstein people, their family, uh, in their home. Jessica? Hi, good morning. Uh, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Jessica. And now we go to the home of Todd and Julie Mass. Often of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ. Your son, whom we confess as the living God, Prepare, prepare your, tree, your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You all call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs, that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. We ask your protection from forest fires, tornadoes, winds, and hurricanes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators, and magistrates, mayors and councils, to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes and the governance of people. We lift up the people of Belarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill us from fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love. Grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved in trouble uh, or in, tr in trouble or adversity or sick in need of care, especially Heidi, Mona, Chris, and JB. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You call us into the first Lutheran church, in which we through, through many are one in Christ. We may we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for forming of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we are um, and restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed mercy and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Ryan and Todd Mass, for those prayers. At this time, we will take the offering. Um, we want to give thanks to all of you for your generous offerings, your financial support, and your continued prayers on the congregation and the church staff and leadership. Um, donations can be mailed to the church or can be made online uh, at the FLC website. But again, thank you for your generous help and support. Uh, several announcements. Uh, we continue with gathering um, donations and essentials for Compass Housing Alliance. Uh, we are gathering new or lightly used towels um, toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap, shampoos, especially the travel size, uh, new socks, and sidewalk chalk. Um, the collection barrel will be outside of the church in the parking lot on Tuesday from noon to 3, also on Friday the 28th from noon to 3, and one week from today, August 30th, from noon to 3. If you have any questions, please contact Donella Robbins or myself. Uh, hygiene donations are also being collected for Lutheran Community Services of the Northwest. And uh, 
the announcement that I was given said that there will be uh, a receptacle today, um, August 23rd from noon to 3, or you can go to the church website to donate monetary support. Uh, Lutheran World Relief School Kits are wrapping up, and um, this coming Friday from noon to 3, uh, school items can be dropped off at the church. It's also a time to uh, do the unpacking and sorting. Uh, also, one week from today on August 30th, from 1 to 2.30, there'll be uh, bag stuffing. So uh, please bring your face mask and join us. Uh, there are disposable face masks that can be given to you if you forget yours. Um, here's an important note in keeping with the times of this pandemic. Uh, the church council is requesting that all church events uh, with participants present should stay within the recommended state guidelines, uh, distancing of a minimum of six feet apart, and masks will need to be worn at all times. If you would like gloves, we can also supply those. Uh, in order to maintain the maximum number of five volunteers participating in each of these events, uh, please contact Audrey Fisher to sign up for the events. Uh, we are only allowed to have five people uh, at a time. So please phone her to register a space for Friday and then also for Sunday. So uh, thank you for that. Also today, beginning at 11 a.m., uh, we have a kids time program, and uh, it's about who is God. We'll have some video guests from Camp Luther Haven, uh, Bender, Zach, Zoe, and Blooper the Puppet. And thank you to Alexia Payne for leading this event, I mean helping with this event. So um, in conclusion, thank you again, Joe, for a wonderful sermon and for the different musicians and readers who um, participated in our worship service this morning. Uh, thank you also for your patience. Um, there are a lot of little steps in doing this worship service. I apologize that I didn't hit mute uh, several times, so please forgive me. Uh, also, thank you to Jackie Schnari, uh, who will be leading this morning's coffee hour. So we continue with the offering prayer. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen.
during the four Sundays of August, as we're reflecting upon the petitions of the Lord's Prayer, each Sunday we'll sing the Lord's Prayer. And now, please receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, Bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Have you thanked the Lord, ELW 829. It's appropriate that as our sending song on a day when we prayed, give us today our daily bread, and we've read about the many gifts that Luther spoke of as our daily bread, that we sing, Have You Thanked the Lord. Bill Lamana wrote both the text and the melody of this song. He was born on the island of St. Croix in the Caribbean and went on to study piano and organ at the Juilliard School of Music in New York City, eventually returning to the Caribbean where he was a musician and composer, businessman, and community activist. He wrote over 400 pieces of music. But this song displays his Caribbean roots as we sing of thanksgiving for the wonders of God's creation, rain or shine, as well as the wonders of his grace in Jesus Christ. Have you thanked the Lord?
And uh, again, thank you for joining us for worship service this morning. Uh, please receive the dismissal. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. And now the postlude.